I'm Rebecca from the Glitch Stitchery. I'm here today with a sips and sips and shuttles video. So, which that's usually sips and shuttles is me doing some weaving. We also taste test um, either some tea or coffee. This time around, it'll be tea. We have my sips by box ready. So, um, first, I'm just going to talk about what we're going to be doing for weaving, and then when Mike is home, we will <laughs> do the sips by box tasting like we do each month. So. This video is going to be one of a few videos. When I was organizing my yarn stash, I realized I have a huge amount of hand spun yarn. Now the thing is, hand spun yarn for me um, accumulates faster than the other types of yarn because I am spinning more often than I am making. I like the process of making yarn best. Of all my hobbies, that's the one I enjoy the most. Uh, mostly because it's really relaxing, honestly. So, I have a lot of hand spun yarn. So for the next few sips and shuttles videos, I'm going to be matching up hand spun yarn with warps, and we are going to do some weaving with hand spun. And just talk about that process a little bit, about how I match yarns together. Um, I'm gonna weave three scarves for this video, and probably three in each of the videos I do for this. So. Let's just start showing you what I've picked for this video. So we're gonna do three scarves. First off, I have the hand spun yarn from the Paradise Fibers, I think that was the January box. Um, well, package is not a box. So the Glitz and Glam one. And I spun that in a recent video, so I'll have that link above. Uh, I'm just gonna go pretty simple with this one. I like the monochromatic nature of it. I love how, how shiny it is. So I picked from my stash some Saki Silk. So that is a fingering weight yarn. Most of my warps are gonna be fingering weight yarns because then I can double thread the warp. And for me, that is just an easier process and I like the way it looks. So this one is 55% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon and 20% Silk. Now I'm hoping that the Silk in the warp and the, was there silk in this? Yeah, there's silk in this. I'm hoping that that will lead to a slightly lustrous end result with a little bit more drape than there would be if there was no silk. And I think grays will generally go together. These are both cool tone grays as opposed to warm tone grays, or at least they're in my eye. Obviously everyone sees things a little differently, but I'm pretty sure these will work together. Um, also from the February Paradise Fibers, I have this one. So this is the, um, I think they called it Twirl. Then I added some scraps of blue singles to it. So it's mostly purple toned, but there is bits of blue, green, and gray in it as well. So I went through my warp stash, which I'm gonna have to replenish soon. I'm running out of fingering weight yarns. Um, so I went through my warp stash and I picked three things. So we're going to do this, which is, um, let's see if you can see it. So it is a cake of yarn from Darn Good Yarns from their sock kits. It usually comes with two of these. And I just have a bunch of random ones from all my surprise boxes. So it goes from gray and dark blue towards a lighter, brighter blues and then a lighter gray purple in the center. And then for the center of the warp, I have some plain gray. So it'll look like that. And then to finish off the warp, I have a little bit of, I think this was merino bamboo nylon. So this is um, another of the socky ones, but it's a different fiber types. I'm pretty sure it's bamboo. So I just have this little bit left. And that should be enough to do a whole warp across and I'm pretty sure the colors will look nice together. What I'm usually looking for is to match at least one color in the warp to a color in the weft so that they coordinate. So even if the other colors don't necessarily match perfectly, the ones that do will tie the whole thing together. So there's, um, there's like a shade of blue in here that matches the shade in here and also a shade of dark blue that matches the shade in here. And the gray in that one goes with some of the gray tones in this one and also matches the gray tones in the other part of the warp. And then this one is, I wish I had more of this because honestly, like it perfectly matches in all of the colors. So that part's nice. 
The last one I think I spun before I even started this channel, so it's been in my stash for a while. I think. I'm not 100% certain on that. I'll have to look through my videos. So, it was a braid of dyed merino that um, I split up and dyed in a, I mean not dyed, I split up and spun in a gradient. So it would have been variegated, instead I broke it up and did a gradient. So this is what it looks like. And then it's plied with either Shetland or Jacob. I can't remember which. Uh, it's pretty soft either way. I think it's Jacob. I'm pretty sure that it was my leftover singles from the Jacob spin. So that was definitely before I started this channel. So for the warp, I've chosen Saki Bamboo. So this one's 50% Merino, 25% Bamboo, 25% Nylon. And these are very fall tones. So it's, you know, reds and yellows and browns. And there's also like a turquoise and some green. It's sort of like a fall toned rainbow. That's what I get out of it anyway. Now I'm not gonna use all of this. This is more than I will need for the warp, but since it's a gradient, I'm going to cut it off at the warm tones and just use the warm tones as the weft and then save the cool tones for a future project. So this kind of burgundy color is probably where I will break it off before it goes into the purple. All right, so those are the three scarves I am going to do for this project. And we're gonna warp up one of them now and work on that. And then hopefully after I get that one done, Mike will be home and we can do the tea tasting. So I'm gonna go get warping and I will be right back. All right, so we're ready to do our sips by tasting for this month. Uh, we finally managed to line up our work schedules so we could do this. And this one's actually our February box because between the move and working, we didn't have the chance to uh, even open it up until now. So the March one will be in April and so on and so forth. Unless in the future I manage to get caught up, which is unlikely. So. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done one of these. It's been well over a month. Probably a month and a half. Two months. Yeah, just on the one I think was the last one. Uh, I have footage for the January one, so we might have... I think we did January. Last one we did was that was when no one showed up here. Yes, and it was definitely January because that was the video about um, commute crochet. Oh. 
Anyway, we are here with another tea tasting. So, I have little notes. We've got a green tea, a jasmine green tea, a black tea, and a ruibus, I can never pronounce that correctly, based tea that also has fruit in it. So where do you want to start? How's it go? Right to left? Or left to right, doesn't okay. matter. Okay. Well, the first one then is Organic Assam Black Tea by O-L-L-T-C-O. -L -L I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Anyway. This one is high caffeine. I did add one teaspoon of sugar to each of these and I added milk just to the black tea. I don't add milk to the other ones. Well, I'm gonna be drinking this one, so. I didn't say anything. All right. Just was on the couch. Solid, it's a good black tea. It's better than one of the other, well, I have a fair amount of black tea in our stash, but only one or two that are plain. So compared to the other plain black tea, I would say this one's better. It's the one with the weird name you can't pronounce. Well, the... Old to go. That's just the name of the company that made it. That's not... Yeah. Hmm. Yes, they are all hot. usually go for plain black tea. You don't, you prefer... I like plain black tea, I just don't like milk in plain black tea. I think it's gross without it. At that point, you might as well just drink water. Anyway. Oh, yeah, sugar in it. Well, yeah, but there are only two ways to drink black tea. The first is to have milk in it and sugar and drink it hot. The second is to have iced tea with buckets of sugar in it. Um, iced tea is completely different animal. I know. I don't put milk in my iced tea, just in my hot tea. Good sun tea. I haven't had that in years. Mm, sun tea. Maybe we could do that. Uh, we we have do the that window, this summer. We have the window space. We do. We it wouldn't work jar. in the kitchen. But we could do it right there with my plants. That's how my dad used to do it. He used to put it in a big jar and then had the tea bags had. My mom used like to put it, it um, in the sun. In the sun, like right outside the front door. Outside the water too. So, you just need like a really good jar. But we have, I'm sure I can, I'm sure I have a jar. <laughs> a plenty of jars. Yeah, you I just, guess. you can't add the sugar to it before you brew it because no. oh, sometimes if you add the sugar before you brew it, then you get bacteria. But if it's just the tea and the water, you're usually fine. It's just water you and there's a bunch of tea bags sitting in there, then you gotta fish them out. So. Right. It's not a big deal. It's not, it's not bad. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Back to the topic. So the, the next one would be Lover's Lane by Mother Nurture Wellness. And this one has ruibus, rose tip pieces, elderberry pieces, blueberry pieces, lavender petals, rose petals, and natural flavors. Um, this tea. one's caffeine free. I'm hoping this one tastes okay because I want more caffeine free teas to keep at home for my sister when she visits. Because most of them have caffeine, but one of my sisters. Why do I have to say which one? You know I don't mention names in the video. I wasn't saying that. I was... Only one of them doesn't drink caffeine. The youngest one. Oh. That's why she doesn't, does she? She can't. So. Let's see how this one goes. Yeah, that's her name. Is. I'm trying to figure out which one. Well. <laughs> I can definitely smell the berries. You're not much of a berry, so I know that. It doesn't taste bad, but it's not for me. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty generous little sample package. Yeah. Can you taste the fruit? A little bit. Yeah. It's more subtle than the Acadia one that you have that you well, love so much. You mean the blueberry? Yeah. The Acadia blueberry? Yeah. But it's, it's very not subtle. bad. And no. It has kind of like a pinky color to it almost. It's not my favorite. I mean, nothing's going to top the Acadia blueberry. Yeah, you do really like that one. That one's really good. I haven't had that in a while. That was like a week ago. <laughs> Did you have it a week ago? Yeah. 
And I know this because I finished off the cherry vanilla that time. Ah, uh, yes, the cherry vanilla. Oh, that one I did need to buy. That one was good. That was really good too. I remember. And it's blood red, which is just a huge plus. That's not bad. I think she'd like that. Yeah, I think so too. I'll make that for her when she visits later. All right, next one is Jasmine Green by Choice Organics. So, I'm not normally big on jasmine, but we'll see. My green tea just looks like green tea. <laughs> Please don't mix them up. They look exactly the same to me. Yeah, it's because of sunlight. Maybe it's green tea. Get... Yeah, I guess so, yeah. And, and when I was steeping these, I did pull the tea bags at three minutes for the green tea, but seven minutes for these two. Because that was what the instructions on these said. With the exception of the black tea. Apparently the black tea said four minutes on here. I thought it said A little bit of sugar. Seven. There is sugar in it. Mm. I'm not going to oversteep that one. Oh, just one teaspoon. I'd probably go with two. Because it's that. You can add no. another when we're done. No, I'm just saying there's not much there for flavor. Well, no, but if you're just putting, if it's just hot water and sugar, you're not really drinking tea either. Not All bad. Right, I'll give it a good. shot. Oops. I'm, I'm iffy on jasmine. I don't taste jasmine. I really don't. I hope I didn't mix them up. I taste jasmine. Maybe it's just me. Jasmine has like a floralness to it. Yeah, I didn't taste any floral. Which is weird because I like other teas that have flowers in them. It's jasmine specifically. I'm like, eh, I can do without. <laughs> anyway, the last one is Organic Green Tea by Shangri La Teas. This one's just green tea. Um, for all four of my teas this month, organic. No, just three. Lover's Lane is not listed as organic. Is it organic too? Yeah, the black tea and both green teas are organic. That's interesting. I do like to have one mm. solid green tea in the house because you can do a lot with it in the summertime with adding different fruit to it. So I am looking for one really good green tea, if possible. That's not bad either. See, that one I taste something. No, I just taste the green tea. Maybe my taste buds are a little whack. I was drinking coffee earlier too, so. But a really good green tea. No, it's not. Yeah, it tastes good. I think I might have oversteeped this one just the tiniest bit, because it has a little bit of undercoat bitterness. Or possibly the water was too hot. Because green tea can be a little delicate. But I like this one. I would buy this one. Alright. So, conclusions. I really like this black tea. Enough so that I might buy some. Lover's Lane, it's not my favorite. But I'm pretty sure my sister will love it. So I'm going to have her taste it. And if she likes it, I might buy some for her. Not a big fan of the jasmine green tea. The Shangri-La organic green tea, however, I could see using that as my green tea this summer for when I make the fruit green tea drinks because it gets really hot. <laughs> and I like having a, like a fruity green tea type of thing to bring with us on our walks with a sipper instead of coffee all the time. So, so when the winter? I said summer. I said iced. Oh, iced. I missed that <laughs> part, I'm sorry. Iced green tea with like fruit bits in it. I'm not exactly awake yet. I can tell. That's okay. But you'll drink the tea and then you'll wake up. So what are your conclusions? Hmm. That's not bad. Which one? Uh, They're oh. saying they can't actually see your hand pointing sorry. because of the cups. This one here. It's not bad. I'll leave it to the sister. She can have it. This one. The black, it, tea. black tea with the milk in it. I didn't mind that. I think that's pretty good. It's good black tea. This one I thought was kind of bland. I mean, I don't. You said it had jasmine in it. I didn't taste it, but mm, it's, like I said, my taste buds are a little 
weird anyway. But it was good. I did enjoy it. And this one I did like a lot as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy the Shangri-La green tea. I can definitely see myself using that one. All right, so that is it for this month's tea tasting. So I guess the next step should be to go back to weaving and weave those scarves that we talked about at the beginning of the video. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. We'll have another one of these soon because the March box is already on its way. So let's get back to weaving. So that finishes my first round of stash busting and I still have quite a lot of hand spun yarn left in my stash that I want to try to get through not because I don't like having a full stash but because tour de fleece is fast approaching and I don't want to uh, double my stash and I have nowhere to put it so I'm just gonna keep working on hand spun yarn scarves for the next couple of sips and shuttles so you can expect at least two more of these so this one, I really like how this one came out actually. For some reason it reminds me of jelly beans, but I'm not actually sure why. <laughs> it does have very fall tones. I still have to wash these, so they'll probably tighten up a little bit, but it came out pretty nice, I think. I like it. So that one's done. And then we have the glitz and glamour one. And I don't know if you can see the glitter in there, but there's a lot of glitter. And it's pretty soft too, because there's a lot of silk as well. So it's got some shininess to it and softness. And these are all very long. <laughs> and then finally, this one. So this one was the twirl based yarn from the February Paradise Fibers, I think. And I ended up using quite a few different sock yarn bits to make the full warp because I they were all pretty small and I wanted a full sized warp so you can see all the colors in that but it still all coordinates so that is the three scarves for this stash buster and if you don't agree with me on <laughs> how I matched the yarns up to the warps or if you would have done things a little differently just leave a comment below I'm always happy to hear from you but that about finishes up this video, so I'm going to go put these in the wash and uh, get ready for my next warp. So I will see you all again soon, and I hope you have a great weekend. <laughs>